All right. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Welcome back to the table. <sighs> okay, we're going to pick the cards up and we're going to keep trucking. We're going to take a look at Mr. Ringo Starr's archetypal place within the Beatles today. Very interested to see this one. Um, you know, uh, he's just a very fascinating and quite uh, under underrated uh, member of the Beatles. I think poor Ringo gets the uh, short end of the stick a lot of the time. Um, just because, you know, the drummer usually does, but the drummer, there wouldn't be a band without the drummer. So that's something that a lot of people need to remember when they are listening to rock bands and whatnot. The drummer is the driving force. So let's see what Ringo's driving force was within the scope of the band. Ringo, Ringo Star, where are you, little star? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder where you are. Okay, sorry, I just got that um, oldie in my head. Okay, Ringo, Ringo Star, what is your archetype? Okay, well, let's check it out. Show us what you got, Mr. Rings. The cave. <laughs> the ring. Get out of town. <laughs> oh, man. The fault line. <laughs> cheeky, cheeky cards. <laughs> Okay, the cave, the ring, and the fault line is what we have for Mr. Ringo so far. What else? We have the village. The riddle. I think George had the riddle, didn't he? He did. I think that's so brilliant. We got the ring. Whoop. Okay, last card, the poet. <laughs> very, very interesting, the poet. Okay, the cave, the ring, the fault line, the village, the riddle, the poet. Very, very interesting. Um, yeah, let's Take a look at the guidebook and see what it has to say about Mr. Ringo Starr. All right, guys. So let's take a look at what the guidebook has to say for Mr. Ringo Starr. And so we're going to start off with the cave. And the cave stands for the dark, the portal, or the interior. Those who are fortunate enough to find and enter the cave are forever changed. It is a place of potent power, acting both as a portal to another realm and a space for sacred ritual and initiation. The cave is a place to return for meaningful retreat where one can see the true self in the darkness. In esoteric teachings, the cave is known to reside in the center of the heart. Within its walls, the whispers of compassion and self-understanding can be heard. Yet because of its mystery and power, many of us fear the cave and never try to find it. We busy ourselves in the bright lights of the city while the cavernous and dimly lit chamber calls out to us in the night. Where is your cave? You already know. Return to it and tend the fire. <laughs> very interesting. I love how it's very emotionally driven. And if you remember, um, we hear that Ringo is... Uh, the ace and the king of the cups, and the cups are all about emotion. <clears throat> very, very interesting. 
So on the left in the black, it says, slowly and steadily, crystals of enormous magnitude grow within the dark confines of caves. Let the cave teach you patience. Yes, reminds me of Carlsbad Caverns. Very, very cool place to go visit. Okay, on the right in red, envision yourself as an old sage in a cave. What amenities do you need? What draws you ever closer to the cave within the cave? <clears throat> Excuse me. Interesting. I also think sort of as like, I think about the hermit card in tarot too. <laughs> so when this card is light, it stands for the sacred, the center within. And when it's dark, it represents withdrawal, isolation, or hiding. Okay, so we start off strong with emotional energy in the cave. <laughs> Next, we go to the ring. Oh, you know, it, it's funny, guys, just a side note. When I did my tarot reading for Ringo, it's been like, I don't know, five, six months ago. It's been a while. When I did my reading for him, I pulled the star card. When I did this reading for him in his archetype, I pulled the ring. Like, what are the odds of that? I just think that is so freaking awesome. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a look at what the ring represents. The infinite, the wheel, the connection. The ring is an image of connectedness. Rather than viewing life as linear, as a series of progressive achievements, the ring challenges us to sense the cynical, infinite nature of our world and experiences. Beginnings and endings fall by the wayside as we practice seeing ourselves as part of this cosmic circularity of creation. For this reason, it's no surprise a ring is worn on the finger to represent eternal love that surpasses space, time, and worldly things. So much can be projected onto this archetypal image because it mimics the Earth's orbit around our great sun and the intimate bond between two lovers. It is the micro and the macro united. Magnum opus. This card calls us to deepen the connection with self, other, and the world at large. Meanwhile, there may be a literal ring waiting to adorn your finger. <laughs> yes. Okay, so up in red on the left, it says, take stock of the jewels you adorn yourself with. Watch out for rings you wear out of habit that keep you connected to the old you. On the, in black on the right, study images of the Mandela, the un, Unus Mundus, the one world the Ouroboros, and the medicine wheel. I just think this is so spot on. You know, um, the connection. You know, I do see Ringo as a sort of um, connection. I, he brought the final uh, glue together, as it were, on the band. So, I don't know. When light, the card stands for connectedness, humility, and sacred cycles. When it's dark, it represents vivaciousness, repetition, and starving for connection. Ooh, so, you know, that could even be like, because Ringo always felt like <laughs> the third wheel, you know. Um, he 
didn't feel that connection that um, the others felt with each other, I guess. I guess he he imagined that it was all three of them getting along and not him. And then I remember like in the anthology, he said something like that. And he said, no, I went over to Paul's house and I said, you know, I think it's you three and not me. And Paul said, oh, no, I thought it was you three and not me. You know, just silly, silly. So, I mean, maybe it could be that yearning for connection. I'm not sure. Let's see what the other cards say. So the next card is the fault line, which represents the fissure, the crack, the weak line. Uh Uh-oh. Imagine walking across a frozen lake that begins to crack before your eyes. No matter how optimistic and brave you might be, panic ensues. You become fearful and tense and long for stable ground. Such is the energy of the fault line. It's the energy of walking on eggshells, of precarious dynamics, of sensing what is ready to break open into chaos. It's likely this cracking open is overdue as fault lines develop slowly and naturally from underlying elemental pressures. This card comes as a potent warning not to deny the shakiness that's afoot. It's much better to prepare yourself for change than to walk along the fault line pretending all is well. There is no easy fix for the situation at hand. It will require a foundational shift that alters the current dynamics from the ground up. Oh boy. This calls to mind from my tarot reading of Ringo as well with his addiction issues. You know, um, you need to prepare yourself to change. Um, Because if not, you're going to walk on the fault line and fall in. (laughs) Okay, so um, in red on the left. It is possible that some, something a loved one said caused a crack in your relationship that has never been mended. Revisit the time to heal is nigh. Yes, great advice. Okay, in black on the right, in Japanese, kintsugi pottery, gold is used to mend the crack. Breaks are thought of as precious rather than something to be hidden. I love that. Love, love, love it. When this card is light, it shows redefining reality, breaking open. When it's dark, precariousness, pretending, or delusion. So, you know, I mean, this kind of, I mean, this does, this goes hand in hand with the ring, you know, and the connectedness, Um, pretending everything's okay when it's not, and yearning for that connection. Super fascinating. Okay, so the next card is the village, which represents the hometown, the family, or the tribe. (laughs) The village presents us with a conundrum. On one hand, it's the place that feels most like home, the place to which you can always return. Nostalgia and comfort draw us back. On the other hand, it is the very place you must leave in order to grow. Around the village, an unspoken boundary exists. One most villagers do not want you to cross. Though some support your leaving, still you hear whispers of doubt as you venture beyond its borders, leaving them behind. <laughs> the energy of the village is present anytime we feel restricted by a certain group, community, family, place, or ideology. It may have served us well in the past, yet staying within its perimeters will never satiate our thirst for life. Thank the village for all it has provided, knowing you will someday return. For now, the world awaits. Oh my goodness. 
totally screams him going off on his own and being a solo act, at least to me and my intuition. That's what this, you know, just <laughs> being um, anytime you feel restricted by a certain group. <laughs> yes. Okay, very interesting. So it's all about Ringo's emotions, like his connectedness. He didn't feel connected. He felt restricted and kind of tied in to the band. Interesting. So um, in red on the left, the village moves with you as it is more of a mindset than a physical place. Okay, in red, I mean, I'm sorry, in black on the right, returning to the village is as, is as important as leaving it. This can be thought of as a completion or an integration of what you learned out in the world. Hmm, when this card is light, it shows intimate, rooted, intergenerational or communal. When dark, it shows small-mindedness, gossip, trapped or restricted. Okay, <laughs> we go on to the riddle, and George had the riddle in his reading. So the riddle stands for the puzzle, the question, the mystery, the magical mystery. When the riddle is present, one must stop searching for the right answer. It cannot be found. And ultimately, it is not important. Rather, there must be a shift from the literal to the metaphorical, from logic to mythic. You are thinking too small and literally about the situation. The riddle card appears when the energy is deep and mysterious like the elusive wisdom in a Zen cone. Focusing harder won't do, neither will increased effort. Time, surrender, and humor are your only allies. What feels like the most pressing dilemma won't reveal its deeper wisdom for a long time. Eventually, you'll learn a profound lesson from the riddle for now, Get comfortable with the limitation of your intellect and the reality of not knowing. It may, in fact, be the only reality there is. Who? Interesting. Um, so, in red on the left, ponder these cones. The coin that's lost in the river is found in the river. If you meet the Buddha, Kill the Buddha. In black on the right, who am I? The only way to work with a riddle successfully is not to work. So when light, this card represents a great awakening or aha moment. And when dark, it represents manipulation, deceit, or trickery. Okay, well, this um, card kind of put this reading into the riddle status for me because I can't figure out where this ties into what we have seen. You know, um, mystery, you know, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think about this card. Um, I don't know if it's just because I'm kind of like brain dead now or what, but I just, I'm not making a connection. I don't have all the pieces to the puzzle. <laughs> all right. And so last but not least, our last card, which is very interesting. <laughs> the poet, which represents the artist, the witness, and the truth teller. Oh, this will be interesting. The poet's work is to feel immensely and not be afraid. They must seek out truth in the darkest corners of the world and carry it back for all to see. This unique capacity resides within us all. 
regardless of our relationship to creativity. When the poet energy is present, there is a call for deep honesty and reflection, for seeing the big picture within the little one. Again, the macro coming together with the micro. Hmm. Okay, and I lost my place where I was. So sorry. (laughs) Um, I got excited. When the poet energy is present, there is a call for deep honesty and reflection, for seeing the big picture within the little one. The poet rides effortlessly between the personal and universal. It's possible that others may not seem to listen or care about the poet's work. But do not be discouraged. The words of the poet ring true, (laughs) pun intended, (laughs) for centuries to come, soothing the wounds of despair and violence that captivate our world. The poet's work is never finished. Find your voice and trust that the wind will carry it. (laughs) Okay, so I have... A thought about this, but let's go to the red on the left. It's likely there is a poem or poet that was meaningful to you at a young age. Revisit and reread it now to be open to its message. Ugh, mine is Venus and Adonis by Shakespeare. Well, and just the sonnets by Shakespeare. In general, yes, I was a huge nerd when I was in high school and just devoured Shakespeare. (laughs) Um, Okay, so um, in black on the right, the poet is related to the shaman and the bridge. These archetypes hoover in the meeting place between the everyday and the sacred. When this card is light, it shows clairvoyant, wise, and timeless. When dark, harmful words, sharp tongue, thwarted creativity. So I see this with this poet card wrapping it up. I see this as Ringo's archetype in the group was trying to find his voice, trying to find his own originality trying to figure out if he goes solo, if he's going to be a success. But, you know, in the end, we all know how that turned out. He was a tremendous success, especially in the 70s. And I think even John said that he was most proud of Ringo's solo success because it just kind of came out of the blue. But Ringo knew what he was good at, which was singing old band standards and acting in silly movies. You know, he he really did, um, he did eventually find, you know, his archetype in the group. And I think it was, I think the poet is great. You know, you don't think of Ringo as a poet, but he was the driving force of the band. The drummer is always the driving force, the rhythm section, the bass and the drums, guys. That's what makes a song, you know, I think personally, I think that's what makes a song touch our like vibrations, you know, not to be all new agey and stuff, but I don't know. I react better. I react more to the bass and to the drums myself. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Very, very interesting. So just taking the tarot reading I did with Ring for Ringo few months back and this reading together spot on you know he had a lot of troubles a lot of worry he hated the situation with Paul and with Billy and with how stifled he felt towards the end um I think anybody who's watched the let it be tapes can kind of see you know his boredom and his just I don't know just not interested and wanting something else. So that is Mr. Ringo Richard (laughs) Starkey Star. So Richard Starkey, a.k.a. Ringo Star. That is his archetype. This is, these are his cards. So 
very, very fascinating as always. You know, it's always neat to see what this is. And um, I'm going to try to get this video out tonight for his birthday. It's a little late, but I've had a crazy week and had to stay late at work tonight. So I'm having a bit of a late start getting my video out there. So hopefully I can get it while it's still his birthday. Anyways, guys, next up, last but not the very least, Mr. Billy McCartney will get his archetypal spread. Yes, he will. <laughs> his time's a-coming, and we shall see what the cards have in store for Mr. Billy. Please join me there, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I just want to say happy birthday, Ringo. Have a wonderful day, guys, and I will check you later. Bye.